I'm Dan Fitzpatrick at OptionMarketMentor.com and uh, in this video we're going to look at what I call the alpha option which put another way is hey Dan why do you trade options why are we doing this it all has to do with alpha so first uh, let's just get right into it why do you want to trade options why does anybody trade options the main reason is leverage and what I mean by leverage is you get a lot of bang for your buck you don't have to put up a lot of money in order to and listen carefully make money if you're right problem is you can lose all your money if you're wrong the devil's in the details and so that's one of the things that we're going to be working on on option market mentor make sure we keep you on the right side of the trade now here's what I'm talking about caterpillar uh, at the time I'm making this video, this is uh, one of my, you know, one of my favorite stocks. It's been uh, a favored stock of mine in a favored sector in quite a while. So let's say you want to buy 100 shares. It's going to cost you nine grand, if, assuming $90 a share. You can control that same amount of shares for about 135 bucks. That's leverage. If you've got the right control and the stock moves the right way, you can double, triple, Forple your money, whatever you want to do, as long as you're in the right trade at the right time. That's what options can do. Again, they can also kind of crush you if you're not careful and if you don't understand what you're doing. Here's another case in point. A uh, while back, look at the date on this back in 2006. A friend of mine, here's how he made 50,000 bucks on Google. Uh, this was where the stock was trading. On the 19th of October back in 2006 now for the last couple months this guy had been buying call options that's the right to buy a stock at a, at a particular price within a particular time frame we'll get into that in a second he'd been buying these call options back when the stock was trading uh, you know up here or whatever he'd buy these ones that where the stock would have to move like 20 bucks or something in order to make money fine close those out at a loss did the same thing again and again and again always closing them out at a really small loss right well then what happens this next magical moment in time what happened the very next day hey stock goes up 33 bucks you know why because the s p 500 um added google to its um you know to to its index this guy had been trading this strategy for months knowing that ultimately Google would be added and that it would be one heck of a trade. So he took a, you know, took a little loss month after month after month and literally made 50,000 bucks in a day. Ultimately made a little bit more than that because Google kept going up from there. That's the power of leverage. Now, if he'd bought 100 shares of Google back then, it would have cost him 42,600 bucks. Now, next day he would have made a big whopping $3,300 because the stock moved up about 7%. He instead made 50 grand. That's a pretty nice trade if you can get it. Again, this is what leverage is all about. Another reason, hedging. You all hear about hedging. You hear hedge fund managers, this and that. It all boils down to this. If you own a home and the, the bank actually owns the home, you have a mortgage on it, you're required to have fire insurance. Same thing with a car. If you've got a loan on your car, or if you're just prudent, you're gonna have auto insurance, accident insurance. You're gonna have liability insurance. You can do the same thing with options where you get portfolio insurance. And there's a lot of indicators uh, like the VIX, the volatility index, put call ratio, um, sentiment, stuff like that, that are based on the amount and the types of insurance that options traders are buying and it all gets back to hedging so these are two reasons why you're going to want to trade options why the market trades options another one options give you options and what i mean by that is stocks move in you know myriad different ways there's just a lot of ways that stocks move it'd be nice if they all just moved in some uh you know in some pretty nice uptrends like that unfortunately that's not the case so here's the thing you've got one specific or well a couple different specific strategies for trading a stock like vmware that happens to be in a very profound 
uptrend really really solid uptrend there are certain strategies that you're gonna make a lot of money on then there are other strategies and this is important if you use the wrong strategy on a stock like VMware I mean unless you're blind you can see that the stocks in an uptrend you can use a strategy on VMware make a little bit of money and only later find out that you it was the silliest strategy that you could have possibly used because you you gave up so much in potential profits by just using the wrong strategy on the right stock stock was moving up but you're using the wrong strategy you make a little bit of money but the whole point in options trading is you don't want to just make a little bit of money there are strategies for that but when a trend is clear like it is here there are other strategies that you really really want to take advantage of here now compare this with Apple stock like Apple back here where it was trading sideways this thing was trading sideways for quite a while if you're using the same strategy that you were using on VMware on Apple you're gonna lose money every time why well it's a viable strategy it's just not the right stock then you can use yet another different strategy for Bank of America you can make money on this stock that's going down um, if you're if all you're doing is trading stocks you just well I like to buy low and sell high this is a stock Bank of America that you wouldn't have been able to make a dime on unless you were always going against the grain you know buying the stock on the extreme sell-off and then selling it when it rallies back up to the 50-day moving average and that's great but at some point you know those value managers are going to come in and snap up Bank of America so ultimately while the strategy may work as far as quote buying low and selling high at some point you're gonna get clipped because you're going against the grain you can trade options put options on a downtrending stock in the same way that you can trade other options called call options on an uptrending stock and it's all it's not just getting leverage it's getting the right kind of leverage on the right stock so there's a lot of different options you have with options pardon the pun last point look it's interesting and fun I actually started out as an options trader because I didn't have that much money to start with um, happily for me the bull market was in full swing and so uh, later what I, I, I learned was that I wasn't really that smart I just had a bull market on my hands and didn't know it I thought I was a genius and a natural trader um, that's the magic of options if you're in the right market and you know a little bit about options trading you can be making a ton of money if you're in the wrong market and you know a little bit about options traders or options trading you can give all that money back but the cool thing is if you if even if you're just watching this video my bet is you're smarter than the average bear most people who trade their own accounts who are have enough initiative and interest in trading their own accounts are intellectually curious you want to learn more about the market um, my bet is some of you um, get up earlier in the morning than you need to and stay up later at night than you need to or maybe you'd like to because you're so intrigued with the market that's part of the that's part of the nature of options frankly it's they're exciting because they really require you to kind of take that take your skill to the next level and by the way it is okay to have fun in trading you don't have to just have a boring portfolio uh, all the time you can have uh, a little bit of fun but the main reason is defined risk you should know if you're an options trader you should know exactly how much money you're risking at, at any given time you should be able to say I'm risking you know at twenty seven thousand three hundred and fifty two dollars or two hundred and fifty seven dollars and twenty seven cents whatever the point is you should know exactly how much you are risking now why do I trade options I've talked about why other people trade options why you might want to trade options I trade options because of what I call the alpha option here's what alpha is alpha is in a word outperformance um, you'll hear hedge fund you know one of the biggest topics of conversation among hedge fund managers is alpha how do I get alpha how are you getting alpha I need alpha 
Alpha is getting some performance better than what the S&P 500 gets you. If the S&P 500's up, you know, 8% in a year or 15% in a year, you want to be up 15 or 20% in that year. If you're barely up and the S&P has outperformed you, you're a money manager, pretty soon you're going to be an ex-money manager looking for something else. So uh, looking for something else to do. I trade options because it's easier for me to get out performance in the market than it would be if all I was doing is trading stocks. Now, if you've been a member of Stock Market Mentor for a while, you know that you know we can get in the right stocks and we can outperform the market in that way. But this is something that most people don't think about. The S&P 500 is always fully invested. There are 500 stocks in the S&P 500, not 490 stocks and then 10 uh, you know, dollars in that S&P 500. In other words, it is fully invested all the time. In order for you to beat the S&P 500 and have some kind of cash reserves, you better be in the right stocks at the right time and to where you're just crushing the S&P to make up for your cash reserves. I like to use options because I can have cash on the sidelines and I'm using the leverage in lieu of option positions. And that gives me what I call pressure relief. And what I mean by that is very simple. You know, I'm not, I, I don't carry myself off as being an awesome market timer to where I can always identify tops and bottoms. I think that in some respects, particularly bottoms, it's actually, you know, a fairly simple task to identify a bottom, at least a tradable bottom. But when, when you're trying to always catch the exact bottom and the exact top so you can get in at the right time and out at the right time, ultimately you're going you're gonna to get hurt and you're going to find that it's very, very difficult to get all the way into the market when you really need to get in. It's just really, really hard to pull the trigger. So in order to relieve me of that pressure, I just know this, I'm going to catch that middle 80%. If this is the bottom of a move and this is the top of the move, I'm not going to catch that specific turning point at the bottom and then also catch that specific turning point at the top. In other words, I don't even try to get to buy in at the exact bottom and sell at the exact top. I think it's really, really difficult to do. Frankly, I don't know anybody except the liars who can do it um, consistently. But what I will do is I'll get this middle 80%. Not going to get the exact bottom, not going to get the exact top, but oh, I'll get this part of it because I will trade the trend. And how will I then outperform the market since the S&P is all in up here, all the way up to the top? How will I do that? Because I'm using that leverage, baby. I'm using leverage on the in-betweens to catch my portfolio up to the S&P and not just catch it up to it, but to pass it. That's how you wind up because you've got, because you have your cash reserves, you're going to lose less when the market um, pulls back or when the market falls, and you're going to make more when the market rallies. So that's why I trade options. Now, you may decide that all you want to do is trade options. You want to be a 100% option trader. That's all you're interested in doing. A lot of members of Stock Market Mentor, all they do is trade options and they use my analysis just to find the candidates uh, to do their options trading. And that's great. But what I find, at least for me, is I would rather use my stock portfolio as really kind of the steam that makes the engine go chew to keep me on the right side of the market, not take on too much risk, and then use the options part of my portfolio for the supercharge stuff. Again, the alpha option. So um, anyway, now I've given you a little bit of a flavor for why I think options are a great addition to any trading or investment strategy. Now let's get into some basic terms. Now just to frame some expectations for the rest of this video, here's what my goals are. Just to give you, you know, a sense of what the heck a call is, what a put is. We're also going to talk about 
Greeks a little bit. Um, also, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures or diagrams that I think, you know, as the saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words. I'll say a picture's worth a thousand definitions. There's kind of an easy way to visualize options to kind of take the mystery out of it. And then finally, we'll look at some examples and try to apply a couple uh, strategies to some basic trends. Again, as I mentioned before, you can be right on the stock. But if you're not using the right strategy, you're still going to either lose money or not make as much as you could have. On the other hand, if you are right on the strategy, but you turn out to be wrong on the stock, that's okay because, again, one of the things that I mentioned that I like about options is my risk is very, very clearly defined. I know exactly what I'm risking on any given trade. So anyway, we're going to go through all of this for the rest of this video, and the goal is to come out the other side uh, to where you really have a sense that, you know what, you can do this. And then we'll figure out the rest as we go along, as Option Market Mentor develops into the same type of resource for options as I believe Stock Market Mentor is for stock trading. So we're going to put the two of them together and have really the complete trading resource. All right, let's get started. Basic terms, owning an option. I want you to think about this. Um, what, do you, what would you rather have, a right to do something or an obligation to do something? If it's me, I would rather have the right to do something any day of the week. I don't like taking on obligations. I would rather have the right to make somebody else do something I want them to do. That's what options are. And the reason I'm pointing this out is very simple. Um, because you can either buy or sell options. Think about it this way. What are you getting in return? Are you exchanging money? Are you getting money or are you giving money away? If you're paying somebody money, you are paying for a right. You don't buy an obligation. You buy a right. On the other hand, if you're selling something, if, if you're selling an option, you are taking money in return for an obligation to do something. So whether we're talking about calls or puts, which I'll get to in a second, it's really important for you to understand this basic term. And that is if you own an option, you have the right to do something, but you don't have the obligation to do something. If you own a call option, you and I'll get into this in, in a sec here, you have the right to buy a stock the stock that that call option represents on specified terms. You don't have the obligation to buy it. You only have the right to buy it. Now let's look at Caterpillar. Now I mentioned this stock at the outset of the video. Here's Caterpillar trading at 90 bucks. You want to buy 100 shares, you can pay 9,000 bucks. On the other hand, if you just want to have the opportunity, the ability, the right to buy Caterpillar at 90 bucks, you can buy a call option. It, you get the right to buy the stock, the right to buy Caterpillar on specified terms, which is $90. You do not have to buy the stock at $90. So here's where that's pretty cool. If Caterpillar winds up going up to 100 bucks, well, you have the right to buy the stock at 90 bucks. You get you buy the stock $10 cheaper than it would be trading at if it's uh, you know if it's trading at 100 bucks. So your option to buy the stock at 90 bucks is worth a heck of a lot more than that option to buy the stock at 90 bucks would be if the stock fell down to $75. Down here, your option's basically worthless because all you can do is buy it. Remember, you have the right, you don't have to buy it, but you only have the right to buy the stock at 90 bucks. So if it's up here at 100, that's a good thing that you can buy it at 90. If it's down here at 75, who gives a rip if you can buy it at 90? You're not gonna do that, you'd rather buy it at 75 bucks. Guys, that's a call option. Again, you have the right to buy the stock on specified terms, meaning at a particular price, but you don't have the obligation to. And so assuming you own it, 
Think about it this way. What do you want to do when you own a call option? You want to call the stock away from somebody else. Think about calling them up on the phone and saying, give me your stock. However you want to think about it, a call option gives you the right to call the stock away or to buy the stock at a specific price. So you make money when the stock's going up. If the stock's going down, like Bank of America, you don't want to be owning call options on Bank of America. While it's nice, back here, when the stock is trading at, you know, 12 bucks or so, it's nice to have a call option at $12 because then when the stock goes up to 13 or 13.50, you're making money. Great, good for you. But that same call option, you know, a few months later, at $12 isn't worth too much when the stock's trading down. So you're not making money if you're trading call options on a stock that's trending down. That's where puts come in. You have the right to put the stock to somebody. I bought a put option. I can put the stock to you where? On specified terms. That's at a particular strike price. Again, we'll just use Bank of America. Let's say the stock was trading up here at around 13 or 14 bucks, whatever it was, and continued to bounce off the 50-day moving average as it had been doing. So you say, you know what? I think Bank of America is going lower. I'd sure like to be able to put this stock to somebody when Bank of America is lower. I'd like to make somebody else buy my stock at 14 bucks when the stock is trading at 1150 that'd be a pretty nice trade you think about it what are you doing in you're doing the reverse of the buy low sell high instead you're forcing someone to take the stock from you in other words you are forcing a sale on somebody else rather than where it is down here so you are literally selling high when the price is down here and pocketing the difference so this is a put option and again we'll get into more specific examples so if you're scratching your head not really able to you're saying what the heck is a call and a put and this and that you'll get it it's just repetition repetition is my stock and trade that's really what I do think about it this way again a call option hello hey I'm calling you up I want to buy your stock you have the right to buy the stock at a specific price you don't have the obligation a put Hey, I'm putting the stock to you. You're forcing a sell to somebody else. Now, let's go through, let's go through some essential terms. I'm going to go through these pretty fast, and, and here's what I promise you. I want you to just listen to me. Um, you can always go back and rewind this video and watch it again, but these can all be at first blush. They can be kind of confusing, but gradually these things kind of sink in, and ultimately this is just so easy it's unbelievable. But if you're brand new to this stuff, it's anything but easy. Essential terms, strike price, expiration, in the money, at the money, and out of the money. What do all these things mean? First of all, strike price, the specified price in the contract. All options are, you know, it's not a stock. It is a contract. It's a contract between the buyer and the seller. In any contract, you have to have specified terms. And when we're talking about stock, we got to know what, what is our transaction? What price are we selling this thing at? Think of the strike price this way. Think of the strike price as a line in the sand. Think of the strike price as the battlefield between the bulls and the bears. You've got a strike price here of 60 bucks, $60 strike price here on deer. So what does that mean? That means that the owner of a $60 call option remember call option we can call the stock away from somebody at our sixty dollar strike price sixty dollars is the line in the sand we have the right if we own the call option we have the right to buy the stock at sixty bucks so as deer moves higher that right to buy the stock clear down here at 60 bucks gets more and more valuable. I like to be able to buy an $81 stock at 60 bucks. On the other hand, if the stock instead moves lower, then that right to buy the stock at the strike price of 60 bucks 
gets worth less and less. If the stock's down at 50 bucks, why do I want to have a call option with a $60 strike price when I can buy the stock for 50 bucks? It just doesn't make sense. So that is your strike price. Again, it's the line in the sand between the break evens and the losers. If you're stock is at 60 bucks and your strike price is at 60 bucks you're breaking even on the trade anything lower than that you're losing money if you own a call option with the $60 strike price now what about expiration there's a time component the most important thing that you gotta understand and again just listen to me I don't want you to get all confused by this stuff the third Friday of the month Every month, options expire on the third Friday, not the second, not the fourth, not on the 21st of the month because that's uh, three weeks in to each month, um, but the third Friday of the month. You got to know what day or what, you know, yeah, what day and what month your options are expiring. And think about this too. The longer the time you have in your option, the more it's worth. Remember what I mentioned at the outset that it's about control. If you can control a stock for the next year and benefit from all the price appreciation or price loss, whatever you have, if you can control it for all that time for the next year, that option would be worth a heck of a lot more than the option that you can only control for another couple days because the option's about to expire. So literally time is money. The longer the period to expiration, the more valuable that option is. So again, we're on strike price. That's the line in the sand. Where is that contract price? I was using 60 bucks on deer as an example. When does it expire? When does the contract expire? And then finally, we're looking at in the money, at the money, and out of the money. Think about it this way. In the money, an option is actually worth something right here, right now. You say, wow, I'm in the money. Think about it in terms of horse racing. What do you hear when, when, one, of your stock, when one of your horses finishes in the top three? It finished in the money. Win, place, or show, whoever's holding that winning ticket is going to make money because the horse finished in the money. Same thing with the option. If at any given time, and once again, we'll just use deer, anytime the stock is over the $60 strike price, it's in the money. Your options are worth something. If it's out of the money, if your option is out of the money, once again, we'll use deer and we will use this $60, uh, this $60 price. If deer was not up here, but instead was down here below the $60 price, then the $60 call option is out of the money. It's basically worthless, except for what? Except for the time value. Remember, time is money. If you can control this stock for another year, even the fact that the call option is out of the money, so basically exercising it right here, right now, makes it worthless, you're paying for time. You've got some time left so the stock can actually make you money over time. And finally, we've got at the money where the strike price, the contract price, the price that you can call the stock away from somebody else is equivalent to the stock price. So if you have a strike price of $5 and the stock price is also at five bucks, that is an at the money call option. So let's just look at a couple examples, just really informally put down your calculators and let's just get some basic terms. Okay, Baidu at 109 bucks, a $100 call option gives you the right to buy the stock at 100 bucks. Now it's a, forget about the decimals, it's at $109. So you have the right to buy the stock at 100 bucks. That call option is going to be worth at least $9, actually $9.68. Why? Because that's where the stock is trading. Your strike price, your call, you have a $100 call. Your strike price is 100 bucks. 
that's nine dollars and sixty eight cents below where you can buy the stock so that's the in the money part of your option hundred dollar strike price a hundred and nine dollars and sixty eight cents um, stock price nine dollars and sixty eight cents is in the money now how about the other portion of the call option that's the time portion that's the out of the money uh, part of the call option if you can buy the stock at a hundred bucks it's a hundred dollar strike price your call option is actually going to be worth more than this nine dollar and sixty eight cent premium the quote in the money part of it why because of time the longer you have until expiration the the higher the value of that call option is going to be so if you have the right to buy Baidu at a hundred bucks but that right ends in three weeks well your call option isn't going to be worth too much more than the difference between the hundred dollars and where it's trading right now however if you've got that hundred dollar call option that strike price at a hundred bucks and the call option does not expire for another year well that option is going to be worth a heck of a lot more than just nine dollars and sixty eight cents look at the trend that Baidu is in you can be paying a lot of money for that extra years worth of time so we've got a strike price down here at a hundred bucks on Baidu right the current price of the stock is down here or excuse me up here nine dollars and sixty eight cents above the hundred dollar strike price so this right here um, is your in the money part of that call option the blue box here anything else uh, the other component of the option anything above here is out of the money that's the time part of your option um, how about Walter Energy okay this is a stock that I've liked um, for for a while I've just recently been really talking about it though but you can see the stocks in an uptrend so your call options give you the right to call the stock away from somebody they give you the right to buy the stock at a particular price right well an $80 strike price is going to be worth a heck of a lot more than a hundred dollar strike price or certainly a hundred and twenty dollar strike price because here you can buy the stock at 80 bucks which is you know what 33 bucks below where it's trading right now if you buy it at a hundred bucks that's still being able to buy it at a discount uh, thirteen dollars discount on the other hand if you if your call option if your strike price is up here at a hundred and twenty dollars that's basically worthless why do you want to buy the stock at hundred and twenty dollars by exercising your call option when you can turn around and just buy the stock at hundred and thirteen bucks instead so why would anybody pay anything for a hundred and twenty dollar strike price uh, for a call option because of the time component if this strike price does if the call option doesn't expire for a year your ability to control that stock your ability to benefit from the moves in that stock is going to be worth something so you will pay some money for that option even though no part of that option is in the money so let's look at another example here and by the way I'm not even going to get into puts and uh, the reason is you know we'll do that at another time and the reason's pretty simple uh, I remember how I was when I first started trading options I took a pretty intense course over a few days and there were just so many things going around in my head that I, I really just kind of had a hard time wait a minute am I selling puts or am I am I buying the put on the call and I just couldn't figure it all out and so we're gonna go a little bit slower and uh, ultimately you'll kind of get the hang of puts because guess what they're just like the opposite of what calls are but I want to use eBay because of one thing eBay is at 30 bucks so let's just go through a basic option strategy I'm recording this video on December 7th okay the third Friday of December is not this coming Friday it's the following Friday on the 17th so I got about a week and a half to go before December options expire remember they expire on the third Friday 
of the month. And so let's say I own a, a $30 call option expiring in December on eBay. So what does that mean? Well, think about the three aspects of an option. In the money, at the money, and out of the money. Now, at the money means the stock price is the equivalent of the strike price. So we got a $30 strike price, $30 stock price. I have an option that's at the money. And let's say the value of that option, if I just wanted to sell it on the open market right now, remember I got about 10 days uh, before the option expires, you know, it might be worth a, a dollar, a dollar twenty or something like that. So, well, wait a minute. Um, the strike price is at 30 bucks. The option, uh, the stock is at 30 bucks. So it's worth what, a dollar twenty? Where is that dollar twenty coming from? That's the time value. That's the value of time over the next 10 days. So the entire value of my call option is all out of the money. Now, if eBay runs up to $31.64, what is the in the money portion of my call option? How much is in the money? Well, it's $1.64. $30 is the strike price. The stock price is at $31.64. So my call option's worth at least $1.64. Anything on top of that is just simply the value of the time. Now, right about now, assuming you're not totally confused over all of this stuff, and again, just hang with me on this because it, you're not going to get it in this one video. I'm just trying to explain it to you in, in terms that hopefully will give you a foundation for understanding uh, as, as we go through this process of learning to trade options in the weeks and months and you know even years to come you'll see that ultimately you can get it. Um, but the question is, look, how are these options priced? Because you're hearing me talking about, well, in the money, at the money, out of the money, it's a $30 strike price, stock's at 30 bucks, so I'm paying how much for time and how's that working? And then, oh my gosh, stock went up to $31.64. I got a $30 strike price, so I got what, a $1.64 in the money, and then the rest of it is time. I don't get that. Who's making these prices up? How are we, how do I know whether I'm buying high or low or what the heck? It's really, really confusing. Well, check this out. This is why it's confusing. This is the option pricing model. It's a theoretical pricing model um, built by these two really smart guys. There was actually a third guy named Merton, but for whatever reason, he didn't make it into the formula. Um, but this is the formula for pricing options. And if, it, if you're really confused, hey, check out the formula for constructing Bollinger Bands. That's about brutal too. The nice thing is if you trade with me, you know that I love Bollinger Bands. They're actually pretty easy to figure out. I'm just not a math head. I don't get this calculation. So let's just throw in the towel, right? Wrong. We don't need to know all this stuff. Just know that it exists. But if you really want me to blow your mind, here's the thing. We got a bunch of Greeks involved here in part of this thing. Put down your pencil. Just listen to me as I go through these things. Delta. All of these different Greeks are in this formula here someplace. Where are they? I don't know. I don't care. Delta. It's the rate of change of the option value in reaction to changes in the stock price. In other words, we'll go back to eBay. As eBay moves up and down, how fast does the change, how fast does the price of the call option, the $30 call option change? That's delta. If eBay's moving up really fast, how fast is the value of the call option? That's delta. How fast is that moving? Gamma. <sighs> That's the rate of change of delta in response to changes in stock price. How about theta? Oh, that's time decay. In other words, remember, think about it, time decay. I was talking about we're on the 7th of December, option expires, the December call option expires in 10 days, 
that's theta. The value of that call option is going to be dropping like a rock over the next 10 days because it's only got 10 days to go before it expires completely worthless. Now, if you've got a call option that doesn't expire until next July, then over the next 10 days, your time decay, the time value of the option, isn't going to change that much. That's theta. One more. And by the way, these are only some of the Greeks that you got to deal with in, in an option pricing model. Is Vega. How sensitive is the option price to volatility? Because you'll have the market will believe that a stock's going to move up a lot or down a lot or it's not going to do anything. That's all implied volatility stuff. So, oh my gosh. How is my option going to change in response to Vega? And it's interesting. I get emails from people all the time who are asking, well, you know, I was looking at the Vega in this option and I'm noticing that there's a skew with this, that, and the other thing. I'm telling you, and unless you want to impress your friends at, at uh, cocktail parties or something, you don't have to know all this crap. You literally don't have to know it. Leave that to people that are a heck of a lot smarter than us. So you don't really, you have to understand that there is a formula and that there are all these variables, but a lot of that can be instinctive to you if you just understand the basics. So if you're saying it's all Greek to me, Dan, I can tell you it's not all Greek to me by Dan. I can help you get through this stuff. It really isn't that big a deal. Now, this is the first of three videos that I'm going to do as an introduction to Option Market Mentor. Again, this is just this is basic stuff so that the beginner can at least have something to grab onto so that you can understand the videos that I'm going to be doing in Option Market Mentor. But here's how that's here's how this format's going to go. In this video, embedded on, on the bottom of this video on the page, it's essentially a blog. You can ask questions. You can post comments. What do you like about it? What do you not like? What questions do you have? How can I help you in the next video? I will read through those questions and comments, and I'm going to craft the next video in response to the questions and comments that you're making uh, about this one. There's a lot of strategies that we can go over. Uh, work on applying some of those strategies to specific charts, stuff like that. So if you haven't been able to guess by now, this is not the complete option course. It's literally an intro to intro to options. So I want you to hang with me on this. Go review this video again. Take notes. Ask questions in the blog here. And then I'll help you out on the next one or two videos and then going on into the next weeks and months. But ultimately, you're going to get the hang of this stuff. And you're going to find over time that you will be able to get that alpha. You'll be able to get that outperformance by just applying some basic option strategies. I'm just telling you, this stuff is not actually that hard. Ugh. It just kind of appears that way sometimes. So we'll get through this together. I want to welcome you to Option Market Mentor. This is going to be fun.